It's Tuesday, October 29th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, a food bank CEO suggests welfare cuts may spark riots. While Obama's affordable health care increases insurance premiums 539%. And government schools teach individual wants are less important than the nation's well-being and government commands must be obeyed by all. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight, food bank CEO suggests welfare cuts may spark riots. The CEO of the largest food bank in America has suggested that planned cuts in food stamp benefits set to take effect on Friday could spark riots. Margaret Purvis, the president and CEO of the Food Bank for New York City, told Salon.com, if you look across the world, riots always begin typically the same way, when people cannot afford to eat food. On November 1st, an expiration of stimulus funds will result in a $5 billion cut to food stamp benefits, the equivalent of one week of food taken off from poor families every month. Could we see riots, looting? Well, that's certainly what Homeland Security has been preparing for, and even the mainstream media is speculating that all hell could break loose on Friday. As we saw earlier this month, just hours of EBT card downtime resulted in mini riots and looting at several Walmart stores. Moving on, feminists are angry at Russell Brand for calling a woman beautiful. Feminists are angry at comedian Russell Brand over a recent New Statesman editorial in which Brand referred to a woman as, quote, beautiful. Although most of the debate centered around Brand's call for a revolution, Salon.com's Natasha Leonard said she couldn't bring herself to jump on the Brand wagon because the actor's framing of women is nothing short of the most archetypal misogyny. That's what she said. And what misogynistic thought crime did Brand commit? He wrote that he agreed to do the editorial because he was asked by, quote, a beautiful woman. Emmeline Pankhurst rolls in her grave. But in all seriousness, again, it's another example of cultural Marxism. While women in foreign lands are being stoned to death and seriously oppressed in a myriad of different ways, feminists like Leonard are more concerned about a comedian using a complimentary word to describe the fairer sex. While on the subject of feminism and cultural Marxism, this is an absolutely shocking story. EU set to monitor intolerant citizens. A frightening proposal currently being considered by the European Parliament would direct governments to monitor citizens deemed intolerant and could even lead to a ban on all criticism of Islam and feminism. According to the Gatestone Institute, the statute represents an unparalleled threat to free speech and would have the impact of effectively shutting down the right to free speech in Europe by banning all critical scrutiny of Islam and Islamic Sharia law. But what's equally shocking, I think, about this document is it also mandates re-education programs for juveniles who commit the crime of intolerance. It also directs governments to pressure the mass media into devoting a percentage of their broadcast hours to tolerance brainwashing. And if you think that it's too ludicrous to even get past the EU Parliament, recall that back in 2001, the EU passed a law which banned criticism of its own institutions. That's right, they outlawed criticism of themselves. So it makes perfect sense that they would, again, in the name of tolerance, which is any kind of free speech critical of Islam, feminism, which are political religious doctrines, have nothing to do with hate speech. They're really trying to ram this through. Section four of the document actually states, there is no need to be tolerant to the intolerant. This is especially important as far as freedom of expression is concerned. So in other words, stamping out intolerance, which again is criticism of political or religious doctrines, trumps the free speech rights of millions of European citizens. This is a threat to free speech across the entire continent. And again, it looks like it's going to be implemented by the crazy, ludicrous EU. Rate shock. Obamacare causing 539% increase in health insurance costs for Texans, reports Mike Adams. It's been widely reported that Obamacare would, on average, increase costs 99% for men and 62% for women. 
Well, how about a 539% increase? A couple in Texas received a letter from Humana informing them that their $212 premium would be going up to $1,356 a month as a result of Obamacare. And they still have the temerity to call it the Affordable Health Care Act. Google reportedly building more floating structures outside Bay Area, reports CBS. After first being spotted building something on a barge off Treasure Island, Google has now apparently started work on a second identical barge outside the Bay Area in San Francisco. So what secret tech project are they working on now? Well, best estimates suggest that it's some kind of promotional gimmick to market Google Glass, the wearable smartphone that represents a bridge to the next level of trendy transhumanist high-tech serfdom. However, it appears as though the product launch has been delayed. Is that because Google Glass is being banned everywhere from movie theaters to cars to banks? Are they desperately searching for a compromise to counter this? We'll certainly find out soon, but the, uh, the tech giant Google, again involved in more mysterious, expensive, secretive projects. Finally, school teachers' kids, commands of government officials must be obeyed by all. A question on a school exam teaches children that the commands of government officials must be, must be obeyed by all. That's a direct quote from the test paper, and you can see it up on screen now. Notice the question below as well. The wants of an individual are less important than the well-being of a nation. This is completely insidious collectivist common core programs brainwashing your children that government is God. The test was actually produced by a company called Pearson, which is a major contractor for the federal No Child Left Behind program. And of course, remember the MSNBC piece, your children belong to the community, not their parents. Well, here you see what the community wants. They want your children to grow up believing that they're bricks in the wall of a collectivist, totalitarian tyranny. And uh, Ron Paul wants 25% of American kids to be homeschooled. And this is yet another shining example of why you need to get your children out of the public re-education system. That's it for the news, but stay tuned for more special reports on this Tuesday edition of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. Well, if you follow the money trail, you can always find the corruption. So the healthcare.gov money trail leads to the White House, Michelle Obama. So I guess this time the administration cannot say that they know nothing. Michelle Obama's Princeton classmate, Tony Towns Whitley, is a top executive at the company that earned the contract to build the failed Obamacare website. CGI Federal earned the no-bid contract to build the $678 million Obamacare enrollment website. Now, there are records of Tony's visits to the White House, which show she visited several times, but three of the afternoon meetings held in the old executive office building were scheduled in advance and one, Friday, April 26th, was not. Three of the meetings were held on Friday and one on Saturday. So before the White House denial begins yet again, Michelle Obama does actually know Tony Towns Whitley. They cannot deny it. And another notch in the Obamacare scandal. During the House hearing on Obamacare implementation today, Ms. Tavener, the representative for CMS, admitted that yes, she does believe that the people who lost their insurance, the ones who received the letters from their insurance company saying that they would be dropped, were mostly small business owners and individuals who purchased their own insurance, such as freelancers. And Ms. Tavener also said that the new deadline for the health care glitches to be worked out of the healthcare.gov site was November 30th. But why does the government always wait to the last minute on everything? The Farm Bill HR 2642 was supposed to be addressed, but here we go again, waiting till the last minute to find out if the deadline will actually get met. So will we have riots on Friday? Fight the tyranny, sign up at prisonplanet.tv today and give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News.